and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. Today we are going to look at cues, or as they are called in uh, event-driven app architectures, point-to-point -point message. So this is a video that it's a second part on my event-driven architectures playlist. In the first video, if you don't know what event architectures are, I recommend you to watch it. It's in the description box of this episode is link, and there will be a lot of patterns in this playlist, so keep an eye on it. But we start with the first pattern that is point-to-point -point messaging. So in this video, we are going to talk a little bit about the pattern, and then we are going to build it with CDK. So let's get started. Point-to-point -point messaging is a pattern in which message producer, event producers send events intended to one consumer. So this is important and you will see in the follow-up patterns that there are different types of brokers. This broker is basically one-to-one. -one. And then the type of broker that we are going to use is called a queue. So you have seen the queues many times. Basically, you have the queue, you have different types of queues, you put an event, and then the event comes from the other side and is consumed by a sender and then uh, it continues. And in this case, because this is a queue, the uh, sender of the message doesn't expect the receiver to do anything. So this is asynchronous and basically the sender doesn't have any expectations. So queues are messaging channels that allows asynchronous communication between the sender and the receiver. As we see in the screen, then the sender sends messages and the receiver receives them through the queue and basically it just says an acknowledge, like, yeah, whatever. Um, the queues are like a buffer in between the sender and consumers, meaning that if the sender is sending a lot of messages, the receiver can process them in the time that they need. So it's uh, great. And also if the receiver is not available, then uh, the messages get stored in the queue and they don't get lost. And then uh, we can control the amount of messages that are sent. So the receiver can say, hey, I can only insert 10 messages per second. And then the queue will handle that. Basically, the messages will persist in the queue until the, cons uh, until the consumers uh, process them or then they get deleted from the queue, for example, if they're trying to send somewhere and they have some retry policies and the message cannot be sent to the consumer. But in the ideal case, the message can go through and it gets deleted. If we think about AWS, what we have here is Amazon SQS or Amazon MQ. So Amazon SQS is what we are going to look today. That is the single uh, Amazon SQS is simple queue uh, service and it's a fully managed service for handling uh, queues and creating your own queues. So we are going to see examples with that. So one typical use case that a lot of people um, come to me and say, hey, uh, I would love to lambdas to talk to each other. And this is something I say, hey, it's not a good idea because basically you are coupling them together. If one lambda uh, talks to the other in a synchronous manner, then the first lambda is kind of waiting until the second lambda finish and you can have a mess because if you have that replicated 20 times, basically everything will time out and you don't want that. Or you might have a chain fail and, and many bad things can happen. So you don't want that. One thing you want if you want one function to talk to each other is to have a queue in the middle. So we apply this pattern. We have one lambda function, send a message to a queue, and then the other lambda function gets triggered when there is a message in that queue. And then these two uh, things live happily ever after. So you can uh, basically invoke the first function and that will send the message. In, and then the second function will take it in a batch, like one at a time, 10 at a time, and it will handle that. And if there is any problem, then the queue uh, cannot send the message to the second Lambda function. It will put it in a dead letter queue and that's uh, totally um, managed by the queue. So uh, you can attach a dead letter queue that basically that's um, a pattern that you need to have when you're working with asynchronous events. In many places, you will need to add this dead letter queue that is a place where all the messages that cannot be delivered are sent to. So in the case of this queue, 
you will try to send the messages to the second Lambda function, but if for any reason that message is poison, is bad, it has any problems, or the second function is not available for any reason, then after a number of retries that you will define, the message will be sent to the dead letter Q, where they wait until you reprocess them again. In order to know if there are messages in the dead letter queue, you can have automated mechanisms to do that, or you can have alarms that trigger uh, that and let you know when there is um, an error. Another way to have a queue, and this is kind of a thing that Lambda does internally, is to use asynchronous invocations. So you can have um, a function that it's uh, sending asynchronously a call to another function. And then in that way, you can make one Lambda function talk to another Lambda function, but they are uh, independent from each other because they are called in an asynchronous way. And how, it, how Lambda does that, it has a queue internally that you don't need to manage, you don't need to create, that will handle uh, the retries, will also have a dead letter queue if something goes wrong and, and, and put it wherever you want to. And it will handle the, the retries and the amount of messages that the second Lambda can ingest. You can do that nowadays with destinations, and that's a way that you can define in um, the Lambda function itself. Where are the destinations that you want to send the messages? So, for example, in the case of success, you might want to send it to another Lambda function, and in the case of failure, you might want to send it to a dead letter queue. Destinations can be anything. They can be SQS messages, event breach. They can be other Lambda functions. So you, you have a list of multiple types of destinations that you can choose from and you um, can build this type of architecture. In this case, the two Lambda functions are kind of tied together in the sense that the first Lambda function needs to know the second Lambda function. Uh, in order to send the message. So yeah, eh, eh. but if they're inside the same microservice, you control both of the Lambda functions, then it's not that big of a deal. But you need to leverage what is the right strategy for you. If you want to have these two Lambda functions talking to each other through a queue, this is great if the two functions belong to different microservices, or you might connect them through a destination if they are inside your own uh, scope and you can uh, work with them together. So let's go to the code and see this in action because I have built some code and I want to show it to you. So the first thing I have here is a CDK project. The code will be as always in, in the GitHub repo. I have built this already and deployed it so it's faster. And I have two scenarios. The first one is two Lambda functions and a queue in the middle and how that works. And then we have the Lambda function destination. But let's look at the two functions. And here we have the queue. This is how you define a queue in CDK. You have different types of queues. Uh, if you want a video only about SNS, uh, if you want a video only about SQS and about the details of queues and more depth into that, let me know in the comments. For now, we just use the basic queue. Uh, here we define the queue, and then we have one Lambda function that is sending the events, and then um, it has permissions to send the events, and then we have one Lambda function that is receiving the event. So it, um, it has this event uh, source mapping that is kind of uh, receiving events from that queue. And then I have some uh, CloudFormation outputs here. So this is uh, how it looks and the code is extremely simple. So basically the sender, what we'll do is we use the AWS SDK and then uh, we'll put a message in the queue. So for putting a message in the queue, you need the uh, Q URL and that's something you get when you deploy. So you can uh, you can see here that when we create the queue, we can get the queue URL and we pass it as an environmental variable. Then the receiver, basically what it will do is receive the uh, the message in the event object. So we can just print it out. So how this works? Very simple. We can. Um, test it in here. So I deployed this. Uh, you can find it in your AWS console. Here is my sender function. Oops, I clicked something. And then I want to basically send an event and I will basically remove. I will basically send this event, but we don't want an invocation type. We want to do it synchronously. So here is the command I need to send. Poof. 
and this uh, should trigger uh, my lambda function. We can see it in the logs Oh, the sender function. Now, if you don't know what I'm using here, I'm using the serverless console uh, plugin. More on that on my uh, top ID uh, extensions for Visual Studio Code. Um, so here we can see that the message uh, has been created and has been sent. And then we should see in the receiver that the message also was received. So that's good. This is uh, our two Lambda functions working together. Uh, we have the sender and then we have the receiver. So now I want to show you the code for the uh, Lambda destinations. So let's look at that. This is a little different and I think this is uh, very interesting. So here we have uh, first to create the receiver and we need to have the queue. In the other case, we create the sender and then we create the queue and well, things like that. But now we need to know the receiver and this is a Lambda function without any event source mapping. It's just there. And basically I'm using exact the same uh, code for this Lambda function that is printing whatever is in the event option. Then I have a dead letter queue. This is just a normal queue with the name dead letter queue, nothing special. Uh, but here is where all my messages are going the ones that uh, cannot be sent. Then I have a Lambda uh, that is the sender, and this is the interesting one. So you can see here that uh, we have the code for this function, we have the runtime, we have the handler, this is exactly the same. Then we have retry attempts, and this is how many times we are going to try to send a uh, message, and in this case zero, so if the message fails, basically we are right away putting the message in the dead letter queue. And here you can see the destination. So this is what I was mentioning before. We have on success, send the event to this uh, Lambda function and on failure, send this event to the SQS destination in this the, the letter queue. And you can see here that the code of the Lambda function is not aware of the other Lambda, the receiver, you will see it in a moment, the code, but the infrastructure of this Lambda function is aware of this uh, function. So in that way, they are a little bit coupled, but again, if you're working with them together, it's okay. And then on failure, we are putting it in the dead letter queue. One important thing is that you need to give uh, permissions to invoke this function. So that's uh, that's something you, you need to do. Invoke the function and make sure that you have those permissions in place. So how the code looks for this, let's look at the destination. And basically here I'm creating another message. And if there is a 10% and there is a 10% probability that there is an error, so I can test the error and the success. And if everything goes well, it just sends a message. And you can see here in the code, there is no AWS SDK. Um, it's not aware of the queue. It's just returning a message and the code is way cleaner. So this has the advantage that this code is uh, very decoupled from the SDK and it doesn't need, uh, you don't need to keep track of that, but it's coupled in the infrastructure. So you need to pick those trade-offs. And then if there is an error, I just throw an error and we'll see what happens. One important thing here is that you need to invoke this function uh, from the command line. You cannot do it from the uh, user experience in the console. And when you invoke that, you need to invoke them with the type event. So this is an asynchronous invocation. We are invoking the Lambda function, the first Lambda function needs to be invoked in a synchronous way. If we invoke it in a synchronous way, the destinations don't work. So this is something important to have in mind. So let's invoke this. You can see I'm invoking the function with the type event uh, and then this uh, should work. So let's clear that and let's send that message and we can see that we got a message back. Now we can check the logs and we can see the sender Let's refresh this a few seconds ago. Let's see if we got an error. We got an error. So we should go to the queue and we should see some, um, some message. I think I had one already because I make this fail. So we should get a two. So we have two messages available here that we can then reprocess and, uh, and work with them. So we can uh, trigger now on the function. We can uh, reprocess them and, and things like that. So this is something that is... Ah, pretty neat. Let's run this uh, again and see if we get a uh, success because 
this is a matter of probabilities until we get <laughs> the the success so we will be very unlucky if we get uh, two in a row but it's totally possible another error this is normal testing uh -huh. but i like to make it like this so it fails let's see again good so now the uh, function succeeded and now the receiver function should have got the should got trigger because we have sent that so we can see a few seconds ago and here is the success and we can see the uh, message body here that we sent that is the time so these are the ways that we can use the queue for um for lambda there are many other ways but i want to show you um these two ways for you to play with them and that was the video for me today uh, in the next episode we are going to look to another pattern i think it pops up so stay tuned for that one and if you like this type of content don't forget to like it and subscribe to stay tuned to the upcoming content and i see you in another episode of Uba.